Thank you very much for for coming on. We'll start this show when we have at least a quarter of a thousand people watching live. So when you come, you you bring everybody on board because this is a, a very crucial live show for me and the people of Ambazonia, uh, based on the rhetorics of the government of La Republic and even some of our Ambazonian brothers who would by now want to respect. Uh, that as Eric Tato, I should uh, be hoping and, um, you know, uh, just a minute, let me fix this real quick. Uh, hoping and uh, thinking uh, that I would allow them have a chance on this our in war of independence. I have been talking with some of our compatriots and uh, I want to assure the people of Ambazonia of my undiluted support and the fact that the, the fire is only going to be higher than ever before. You know, a lot of things have uh, happened the last uh, two days uh, since the PCC in Queen Saga and a lot has gone on already and we, we must say uh, that uh, a lot of people are yet to understand uh, the kind of thing Eric Tato is made of. That is why I have seen from both camps, I call them camps from the La Republic camp and from the camps of uh, some of our brothers who are supposed to be uh, in this revolution, they are thinking that uh, uh, Eric Tato is going to, to be bullied uh, because of course, uh, a lot of them have still not understood and probably they have failed to read a little bit of history and uh, about this young man called Eric Tato. And today, I want to talk on a very personal note uh, because there are a lot of things that are going on and uh, I can assure all of you of uh, the progress that we have made the last two days as the people of Ambazonia and to tell you sincerely that we, we must concentrate on the issues that are, are at hand. So ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, once you join, you share extensively I will start uh, talking in the next uh, couple of minutes once we have uh, at least uh, uh, quite a number that I want because this is a very uh, significant uh, live show for me and for us. I intend to be very brief after I must have passed this message to the American government, to the international community, and of course to uh, uh, the government of Mr. Bia and to some of our Ambazonian brothers. And uh, I'm starting this live show by stating here unapologetically that I owe nobody any apology. And uh, if you want to consider uh, the things I'm going to say today as uh, arrogance and pride, that would be your own judgment. But I want to state here authoritatively that I, I will not and have never uh, regretted uh, my action and the postings that I've done. And I have a, a, a clean reply to the government of Pordia and to some of you Ambazonians who are still uh, behaving like 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 uh, like some uh, lava, like chickens or chicks, or probably like uh, some kind of uh, <laughs> uh, eggs that is still trying to be formed. I have a clear message for you because this is war. And this is a revolution. And I will still seize this opportunity to pass a clear message to the, the students and pupils that are back home because based on circumstantial evidences, you must have seen that the times are rough and we must stay focused because in this revolution, uh, unless otherwise we have failed completely to understand the difference between uh, intelligence, forewarned and involvement, then anybody would have uh, noticed by now that uh, they, they, they are stupid not to have understood the differences between these things. 
So ladies and gentlemen, we'll be starting uh, the, the talk very shortly. And that is when, of course, we must have had uh, just uh, quite a number of, uh, of people who will be watching us at this time. I am also sending this link to some international media organs. Uh, I've been talking with a lot of these people. I'm also sending to Amnesty International, uh, to BBC, and a lot of these media organs will be watching us at this time. Because the declarations I want to make today are very important and significant for this revolution. And uh, the PCC in Quensaga undoubtedly has been one of those, uh, in fact, not one. It is um, the only very uh, strong thing that has uh, pushed this revolution to uh, a level that nobody uh, would imagine. Today, I don't want to talk uh, the politics in Ambazonia. I want to talk about the, the war in Ambazonia. And I want all of you to understand that I have uh, a sincere concern about the attitudes of some of our compatriots. And let me be very clear with most of you that uh, it has given me, the saga the last uh, two days, uh, has actually given me a reason to rejoice and uh, that some of our compatriots have really messed up themselves. On the contrary, they want to respect that Eric Tato uh, would, would be in some corner trying to think about what is right, what is not right. As a matter of fact, before uh, we share uh, items or videos on our pages, uh, on our timelines, we are very certain about the things we share. And I want to tell all of you who watch me at this moment and those who are watching me that as a journalist, I owe nobody no apology for publishing what I have as information. What I owe most often to, uh, most often to my followers is what I can call a rejoinder. Those are some of the things I want to be talking today. As you are already aware, and some of you must know, those of you are watching me from the camp of Mr. Pobia and uh, from the camp of Colonel Bajek DJ, DJ Bajek, and uh, those of you are watching me from the other camp, you must be, be aware that there is uh, increased uh, pressure. The government of Mr. Pobia has just finished an uh, emergency security meeting, and uh, I have been informed that they are putting up a, a powerful complaint to ask the American government to deport me uh, back to their sales to a sale in Set or in Konengi. I have news for the government of Cameroon. I also have news for the government of America. And I have news for the genuine people of Ambazon. And I also have news for the people who think that uh, this is an opportunity to get Eric Tato incarcerated. I have serious news for all of them. And uh, I will not mistake uh, this particular, at uh, this particular point, to let them understand my stance in this movement, in this war, because this is war, and I'm still going to see this opportunity on this live broadcast that I know that the FBI is watching me, the police in America, the State Department, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch. In fact, everybody's on this show. I can see them. Some of them already here, and to tell them that I am categorically asking students and people to stay home for their safety because a lot is going on and as a journalist who has first-hand information on the ground it is my responsibility to continuously assist in the dissemination of information without bias without fear of favor without fear of imprisonment jail or incarceration and so i owe no government in the world no particular organization uh, any answer or any explanation to where, how I get information. And uh, I think the world pass and uh, that be, uh, should be thanking me, uh, like I've had calls from other uh, white colleagues, thanking me for bringing to light the video that has caused a lot of, um, you know, international debate. And that has brought Ambazonia to uh, the highest level of internalization. And of course, as you must hear, I, Bajek has been giving interviews all over and trying to quote me as to the fact that uh, they say that it's uh, Ambazonian fighters who took those students because Eric Tato reported so. I like that point and I like what Bajek has said because it gives me a lot of strength. And probably Bajek was saying that when he had not listened to my interview on the BBC. So this is a moment where Ambazonians must remain committed, they must remain focused because this revolution is about 
uh, to really get exploded. And I want to let all of you know, for those of you who have known me in the past, those who knew me from Cameroon and all these journalists in Cameroon who are watching me at this time, who have known me, that I'm one man who is not afraid to go to jail for what I believe in. And if you think that uh, this, this young man is uh, otherwise, then that is your business. This is a clear message to all of you who probably uh, think that your understanding of my declaration and my posting of the video would have been, you know, uh, uh, something that you can carve out for your own, uh, uh, you know, personal aggrandizement for you to tag me to some form of terrorism and for you to give a reason just like the government of Mr. B.I. is doing. I want to feel that it is a shame that some of you Amazonians who are supposed to protect we can have internal politics, but when it comes to issues that are particularly sensitive, like the issue of the PSS and Queen students, I see a lot of cowardice in some Ambazonian people who call themselves freedom fighters. Now, let me start one point after the other. I intend to make this video a very short and uh, hoping that the people of Ambazonia after today would have understood exactly, uh, uh, you know, what I mean by fighting for freedom. I have talked with um, uh, three very uh, trusted activists, or let me say four, because I talked with Yannick Sikot, I talked with Ashu Kinsley, I talked with Matt Barita, and I talked with Kemi Ashu. As a matter of fact, I have made my position very clear to them, and I have stated categorically the agenda and the way forward for this revolution. At this time, I think that uh, there is no way I can limit myself to the to 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 the to the to the, to the Ambazonian fairs because this revolution needs to be taken to another form and we are exactly happy to another level and we are exactly happy that the 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 uh, uh, Nkwen saga has indeed taken this movement to an area or level where nobody believes. I am just trying to make sure that I share. Uh, this video to some of our partners who will be watching at this moment because I want to make very, very saucy and serious declarations and this is not a joke because this revolution is at a place at a stage where we must remain focused with a lot of, uh, you know, commitment at our own level what we want to share and what are the approaches we want to take to achieve our independence. As you are all aware, Mr. Paul Bia has failed tremendously in his war approach in settling the uh, Ambazonian crisis that has now evolved into the Ambazonian war of independence. And that is why we must, as a people, begin to stay committed at this level. Without said, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, I want to now uh, start the exact presentation and to tell all the people my, my position about a lot of things today. Now, the government of Cameroon has met with all its top security officers and they say that I am the most dangerous person describing me as a terrorist and try to tap the arrest of the students to me. I mean, uh, one of their fervent uh, um, uh, propagandists, who of course is an Anglophone brother of ours, has been doing the same on his Facebook page and uh, even some Ambazonians have called uh, a lot of uh, top authorities in the U.S. trying to implicate me to what only them know. Now, let me be clear. I, I understand that they are putting complaints and sending my name to the American embassy asking the American government to deport me. That is a very excellent move from the government of Mr. Bia. Excellent and stupid. Number one, I want to say to all of you Ambazonians that yes, I published the video on the PSS in Quen issue and I published the video first and I take credit for that because uh, it is uh, a matter of publication and that video was published under a professional uh, news organ under the National Telegraph which is duly registered. I'm talking on Facebook because I pay some money for uh, a Facebook page promo and that page is very viral and wide. And the last couple of days I have spoken with at least 20 media organs who got to me to get my impression about the video. Now, there is an initial video that Eric Tato Tano of uh, National Telegraph Editor-in-Chief published. And let me remind you that my news organ has a license and is authorized by the government of Mr. Bia since 2013. 
when I was still calling National Telegraph, because based on the 1990 law of freedom of press and social communication, you have the right as a journalist based on a particular uh, uh, connotations in that law to own a newspaper, in which case, newspaper or media organ, in which case, in the case of a newspaper, one of the, the, the criteria would be that you must have at least a first degree in journalism and mass communication uh, or media studies or related fields, which means that to be an editor-in-chief of a paper in Cameroon as of 2013 when I got my authorization and my license by simply declaration and the deposition of some documents, it would mean that you must have a first degree, at least a first degree in journalism and mass communication. Yes, of course, I'm saying this so that the American government should know that I'm a licensed journalist by excellence and with all by all ramifications. And so I got that permission from the government of Mr. Bia. But now, because the way the regime operates, because of its dictatorial issues, I've been assaulted 17 times in my new division alone. And that has not stopped me from speaking the truth and from writing a very powerful dictatorial in what people, most people who read my paper know. I used to have a, a column on page 7 of our newspaper known as Letter to, Letter to Seseko. That is one of our most strongest columns that I used to write. That used to be sarcastic and had a lot of satire. Why am I explaining all these things? Because I want to come to the basic of this particular video. Now, let's listen very attentively. The government of Cameroon, of Mr. Bia, coupled with some Ambazonians, are trying to tag me based on what I publish. And I want to tell you authoritatively that no government in the world, nobody, not even the International Criminal Court, can hold me responsible, liable, for any issue in PSS and Quen because I publish news as a journalist. That was published on National Telegraph official, and I don't want you to mix your sentiments as Ambazonians because I'm a son of Southern Cameroons. When the BBC, the Al Jazeera, and other media organs publish news, number one, you wouldn't ask them where they get their information. So I want you to respect the fact that, apart from the fact that I do activism for you, Ambazonians, for free, nobody pays me for doing that. I also have the right to publish news firsthand. Now, what is the implication of what I publish on the PSS in Quen? Now, Eric Tato published that as a publisher, editor-in-chief of National Telegraph. And some people would exactly want to think about the fact that, oh, that is fake news. Let's assume that is fake news, which in which case I have explained the nitty gritties of that video to Mark Barita and to Ashu Kingsley, who are aware of the situation and what is at stake. Now, for those of you, this is what is meant for social media consumption. Now, for those of you who do not know uh, what is going on, let us be very clear and straight with you people. You know, when you do news that is assumed that is not correct, for example, the most powerful journalist and the most sincere of journalists, the sincerest of journalists, and the most responsible journalist will be those who do what we call a corrigendum. A corrigendum is most powerful than a former article that has been published. That is why I want to say that La Republic is down the source. What do I mean by that? Now, I published an article that supposedly had some kind of, uh, I was misled. Let me put it that way. I, I should take responsibility for having information that probably did not go down well because is that video fake? No, the video is not fake. The video is real. Those were students of PSS uh, and Quen who were arrested or kidnapped, if you like. But then the publisher of that video uh, did not. Did I published a video based on the interpretation of what was on the video that they were Amber Boys who arrested those students. What is wrong in publishing that? Absolutely nothing. Now, in the next phase, as a journalist who is following the event, I have realized after further investigations that that was a, 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 a mix, there was a mix-up and that was a cooked up video. What did I do? I went on after many calls from other media organs to ask me to explain because the video was very controversial. I gave interviews on BBC, on ABC, Al Jazeera. Today I just spoke with uh, an Al Jazeera journalist and many other journalists. I've spoken to a lot of them and uh, I was doing a corrigendum based on that. Even when Amnesty International called me, I did a corrigendum saying that, yes, as you listen to that uh, uh, interview with the BBC, I published that video based on the information that they had on the ground. And when you realize that information that is not correct, uh, 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 an information that you have published is not correct, what do you do? You would immediately do what they call a rejoinder. And a rejoinder is very straightforward and simple and powerful. For example, you pick up a form in an office where you want to write your name. Let me give you a simple example. And you want to write Eric Tato. You write 
Eric E R I C and in spelling Tato, you 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 write T A T W A. You make a mistake and you give the form and they say, is this really a name comparing with the with your ID card? You say, oh sorry, that is a mistake. You take the form from whosoever is having that form and you cross a line. You cross a line because the first spelling of your name was a mistake. It was not correctly spelled. And so what do you do? You do a correction by writing the correct name. And so what is the problem in doing a correction? That is a question that I ask. Now, after all of that it has been said, let me ask you, who can deport me? Nobody can deport me in this country because this is a country of law. And as a journalist, I have the right to practice a lot of things. When I told some of you that we have the right to put tomatoes and other things on the bodies of uh, politicians. Some people still did not understand what I meant. They thought it was against the law. But you go to Kemi Ashu's page, you see how French citizens were tormenting uh, the, 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 the president of France with papers and all sorts of rough things. That is because you must know the law and you must know what you propagate and what you say. And a lot of people even including uh, uh, Colonel Budget, is still dreaming to think that I can be deported. And some of you who cut part of my video where I'm saying that Gary this, Gary that, you will have to explain and interpret Gary for me. I remember the master of the meaning of Gary, and these are troubling times, and nobody can interpret what I say. Well, the truth is that in the past, I have been very hard in some of my declarations, which, which has helped to keep the general atmosphere and to keep many students safe. And today, I am using this opportunity to call on parents of Southern Cameroons that the days ahead are going to be rougher than you imagine because there is a gang from Paul Atanganji to continuously corrupt the image of the revolution or the war and so they have paid people to attack schools and kidnap students and blame it on Amber Boys. So you have to keep your children home because a lot of those incidents are going to be happening in the days ahead. Why do I say so? Let me get this point very straight. I'm a journalist. I have intelligence. For example, when the missionary was shot and killed, I was the first person who published it. La Republic du Cameroon still tried to tag me to the death of West, Westco, uh, uh, Senator Westco. And what happened? The family already knew that it was the military who shot and killed Westco. The same thing they are trying to do. For those of you who don't know, the issue is that having first-hand information is based on trust. When the Minister of Defense was going to small Ekombe to open the camp, I was the first journalist who reported it. When, of course, the CAF delegation was going to Limbe and to Fako, to other parts of Fako, that's Limbe Boya. I was the first person to have reported it. So, people give me information based on the fact that they trust me. And for once, I think that I've been misled. And it gives me the credibility, all in total, to come and tell the public that this is the right information and that is only the right thing that any responsible journalist would do. It's not about fake news because in itself, the video wasn't fake. It was a real video taking of kidnapped children and just that the person was finally giving the message out there misinterpreted the message. If you look at the video from the ongo, it's clear that they were Amber Boys. And what, what should I have published in the beginning? I didn't publish as an Amazonian. I published as the editor of National Telegraph. Just like the BBC, the CNN, Al Jazeera, and other media organs took that. But after I've discovered that it wasn't, it wasn't correct, I gave other interviews on the BBC and other media organs to clarify exactly why my change in position. Now, number one, let us get this very straight. Authoritatively, we can say that yes, the Republic planned that kidnapping. And for Colonel Budget and the others, why is it that they are holding the principal and other people back? This is the answer. And I want all of you, Kemi Ashu, Mark Barita, and everybody who's watching at this time, to take the reason why they are holding the principal. They are holding the principal, according to intelligence, because the money, 200 million, that Atanganji poor and Colonel Budget promised that they will pay the kidnappers who stage that video, they have not paid the money. So they are still undergoing, I hear they are threatening the family members or they have arrested or kidnapped some of the members of one of the guys who acted in that video because they are asking their money 200, uh, 200 million that is left in order for them to have done their job completely. So the, the kidnappers are still holding the principal because the government of Cameroon has not kept her sight of the bargain. I think that is the news that is on there, and that is what all of you are supposed to do. So it is a clear point that the government of Mr. Bia staged the kidnapping, and I can say it based on the fact that I have that information, and I can defend the video that I published. And if Colonel Budget could quote me as saying that he only knows that the Amber Boys took those fighters because he read from my post, that is true. So now Colonel Budget can still quote me because I have had another information that it is because the government of Cameroon 
the government of Cameroon has refused to pay those boys who did their job. That is why, that is why most of them, most of them, they, they are still holding the principal and the other people that are left behind. Now, let me, let me be clear with this. And let me be very clear with all of you. For those of you who, and before I go, one new policy on this page. Nobody will ever be blocked. I want everybody, in fact, I've, I've, re, I've given everybody back their freedom on this page and all my platforms. So we're going back to our normal policy because I need all of you to come here and begin to talk. Because only yesterday and two days ago, I discovered that over 500 new fake profiles have been created to, to, uh, uh, to attack me. Now, let us be clear. They are now campaigning with the American government to deport me. I want to come to this very important and crucial part. The government of the United States that is listening to me, I am still saying it authoritatively that the government of Mr. Bia should be held accountable for crimes against humanity. The government should ensure, the government of America has written very clearly, as most of you are already aware, there is no international organization that has actually, actually said that the Amber Boys took those children. There is no proof based on the fact that Eric Tato published a video. And I published that video and I'm coming back with the corrigendum, which is strongest than the video that was published. And because that, those are the facts, those are the clear facts now on the table. So for those who do not believe, and those who think that this thing is a romance, they had better begin to think again. Now, listen very attentively. Mr. Bia, Colonel Bajek, Okay, and the budget and the rest. I want to give you very serious news. You will need all the money in your life. You will need all presidents in the world to get me deported from this country because I published news about what happened in PSS in Quen. I think the UN, the United States, should be happy that I brought a very important human rights conspiracy on the, on the, on the limelight. If had, I, had it been, I didn't publish that video. We will not have all this international debate. We will not have all these things that are going on. And nobody will be talking about Ambazonia and you people will not un have understood the diabolic plans that the military is planning against the Pope Ambazonia. So I must tell you very sincerely that we stand with this revolution. It is war and we're never ever going to tolerate anything. To the students, there should be no school. I still want to repeat, no school and no school at all. Because the days are very bad and human lives are at stake. If they have killed 9,000 people, the government of Cameroon is not afraid to kill more people. So be very sure that it is a fact that there is a high level conspiracy from the military to continuously attack students in boarding schools and other places in order to corrode the image of the revolution. These are some of the things I told the international community. Most of the people today, I met with one of our friends who... They spoke, he spoke with Mark Barita and Ashu Kinsley, and he's a white friend who very influential and been to many countries and we've been explaining a lot of things together. Now, I'm saying it categorically. The United States has given a very strict order and ultimatum to its citizens that Northwest and Southwest are dead zones. And I'm also seeing this opportunity to tell our parents that schools are dangerous for students at this time of war. So keep all of your children home because nobody can guarantee their security. I advise you in your best interest that the days ahead, more kidnappings are being planned by the government of Mr. Pobia. We have had this intelligence and all the schools in southern Cameroons from Boya to Bamenda to Munya to Moyoka must be shut down completely because of the conspiracy of the government of Cameroon of Mr. Bia to continuously arrest students, kill some and blame it on amber fighters. You have seen in many places where the military has attacked schools, hospitals like in Konya, and they have burned people alive. So this is an opportunity for us to ensure that we keep our we keep our revolution intact. So there are going to be no more schools, and that is the advice I'm giving for the sake of safety. Any parent who is listening at this time must keep your children home. Back to the very most important issue. To tell you what I told the international community, that... Mr. Bia faked uh, uh, interna transparency international observers who came to Cameroon. He faked the kidnapping of some tourists some time ago. Mr. Bia has faked a whole lot of things, and the reason why we can authoritatively, based on circumstantial evidences and other hard facts from the ground, that Mr. Bia actually 
fake the arrest of those students in order to, number one, divert international attention from the death and the funeral program of uh, uh, the missionary uh, Charles Truman Wesco. Just to inform you, Ambazonians, that at this moment we stand with the family of uh, Mr. Charles Truman Wesco and we send our condolences to the people of Indiana. For those of you who are in Indiana, who are in Ohio and other places near that state, the funeral program for uh, the, 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 the late missionary is on Monday, Monday the 12th. I've just been informed by the funeral home and some family members. So on Monday the 12th, if you are around Indiana, make sure that you go out there. I will give you the address that was sent to me where the burial will be done. Uh, they say the burial is, is private, it's only for the family. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, any other person is, uh, is allowed to attend the the, the, uh, the the funeral program in church. So this is where it's going to take place. I want to read this out for you. Uh, and they say, according to what I have here, I'll give this announcement very briefly, uh, for the funeral of uh, Charles Wesco, private family services will be held and uh, he will be laid to rest at uh, Oakwood Cemetery in, War in Warsaw, Indiana. That's where he'll be laid to rest. In the meantime, Charles' life will be celebrated with a public memorial service to be held at 1 p.m., on Monday, November 12, 2018, at the Community Baptist Church. It is going to be at um, 5715 Miami Road, South Bend, Indiana, and the zip code there is 46614, and it will be officiated by uh, uh, Pastor Randy King. That's the pastor that's going to be officiating that. So all of you, you make sure that uh, you'll be there. Those of you around Indiana, you can ensure that you go there and all of those. So, uh, to be clear with you, I want to seize this opportunity to tell all those people who have been writing my names in other places on social media that I've been reading you. And instead of you to take your time to thank me for internationalizing our revolution, you were busy thinking that it was an opportunity to write my name in places that I don't understand. I'm very busy now with a lot of things that concern the faith, the solidity of this revolution. And so I will not have time to answer you just now. Let me be very steady and certain for all those of you who think that you had the opportunity to talk about issues that are irrelevant, that I have not forgotten about all the thiefery and all the propaganda and how you intend to turn the revolution into your, making, your money-making machine. And I want to ask you to stay off because there is only one thing that's going to happen at the end of this revolution. All those of you who are trying to corrode the image of this revolution, trying to steal from people's pockets and trying to divert our attention from your teeth free, your scamming, you are not going to succeed because I will always hold you accountable. Once I'm done with the issues that are work, that are, that are at hand, I'm going to ensure that we will still come back to all those of you who owe us what you owe the Ambazonian people. And let us be very clear and very clear that for those of you who are making noise from left, right, I'm reading you on social media. I am not concerned about those things you write about me, about what you wrote. If you describe me in whatever capacity, that is your business. But I'm focused on ensuring that the Ambazonian people get the right, the right information, they get liberation, and that is exactly our focus. So you have to stay committed. And of course, do not forget that there is no way you can divert people's attention from your diabolic acts. So all of you be very aware of the fact that there's only one thing that will happen in this revolution. And I said to a lot of people that those who are waiting for my apology because I publish news on my official page, then you have to wait for that in hell. I know when to apologize when I do something wrong. And absolutely, I must say that based on my journalistic, journalism deontology, I do not do anything wrong. I've done the right thing, publishing what I was misled and coming back to do a corrigendum. So if you don't know the meaning of a corrigendum or a disclaimer, you can go to your dictionary and you read that. I think you would you would be satisfied with my work. So far, so good. And I want to simply now at this moment tell you two things. Number one, we will not, we will not relent our efforts in defending our homeland. I urge all of you watching this video and even the American government, the FBI, that the people of Southern Cameroons have the right to weapons have the right to anything that they can defend themselves against the intrusion of the military of Mr. Bia. And so all Ambazonians, when we went to the BLM fundraiser, I preached one man, one gun, which is according to the Second Amendment rights of to the Constitution of the United States. You have the right to own a gun in Ambazonia. And do not forget, if every household has a gun, before the military comes there, it's going to be a fight. Other than allowing yourself to be killed, like the five or six, seven people in Mushe and in Beme, like those who were killed in Esu, those who were killed in Injinikijem, those who have been killed in the BLM in 
For Permanent in Guba, those were killed in Jan, in Fako, in Boya, and other places. You would have put up a fight that would have been so powerful and destructive to the regime of Mr. Bia. So you must stay focused and ensure that you have all the necessary materials to defend yourself, the Pope Ambazonia, because that is the only means that we have to survive in this particular, in this war that Mr. Bia has declared on us. And nobody, no fighter, no human being on earth should stay within the territorial confine of Ambazonia should ever lay down weapons. Mr. Bia, who declared war on Southern Cameroonians, must declare a unilateral ceasefire. What is the meaning of unilateral ceasefire? It means that the person who declared war must declare end of war. When that is done, he would have, he would have withdrawn his troops from Southern Cameroons and we will sit on the table as equals to discuss the state of our of our state, the state of negotiation, and how we are going to leave the Republic to Cameroon. There is only one thing that's going to happen. Do not be scared. Stay focused. Forget about the threats from the Republic to Cameroon. The United States Department has already written that Mr. Bia must respect the rights of Ambazonians and that there should be broad-based dialogue or negotiation, if you want, without any precondition. And just to also inform you that there is a big win for Sisekwa Yoktabe Julius and the others in Nigeria. Just today, which of course, uh, uh, Barrister Femi Falana and Barrister Abdul Oro in Nigeria at the Federal High Court in Abuja, they had a suit against the Nigerian government that has been going on, demanding that Sisiko and Co. should be taken from Yaoundé and brought back to, Yaoundé, to, to Nigeria because they cannot take refugees, those who have refugee status, and deport them illegally to Cameroon. They are also asking for compensation to be paid to our leaders. And of course, the government of Nigeria filed an affidavit where in which case a counter affidavit has been filed and that case has been adjoined to the January 22nd. So there, is a, there are a lot of things that are going on and these are the things that we must ensure that we keep our heads on. We have been talking and we have been talking with a lot of people and we have been trying to push the Ambazonian uh, uh, independence war to a different level. I urge all of you on Grand Zero, all the fighters that you have my support, the county by county, approach will continuously kick on and everybody will have a substantial support in order to persecute the war. I will continuously, in my name as Eric Tato, carry out campaigns for funds from state to state in the United States and even other areas in Canada and Europe to ensure that our people have enough money to buy enough weapons to defend themselves. I call it weapon because the United States of America should be aware that we are at war and you should not be scared to go to jail by calling the things that are supposed to be called in their, by their names. And there is nobody who isn't aware that when people have been attacked, they have the right to defend themselves. As a human rights activist, as a self-defense activist, and as a journalist, all my life in this revolution, I have preached self-defense and I have preached the rights and techniques to defend yourselves. So, Ambazonian people, do not be scared. There is nobody born of a woman that can ask the American government to deport Eric Tato. That would be a talk for the court and the American government cannot go against human rights deporting an activist to a country where he will be killed. So all of you stay calm and do not mind about all those talks. For those of you cutting part of my video and sending them to the to the to to the FBI and other places at any time that I will call upon, I will defend myself. And what I will tell the court in America is left only for me. And that is my defense and that's my toughest secret. So do not get scared. I am standing here and the revolution is taking another level. And for all those of you who have concentrated yourselves the last couple of days, hoping that this was an opportunity for you to take advantage and run away from the numerous state free and scamming that you have done in this revolution, you have to think twice. We are staying focused because that is exactly what the Ambassador War of Independence means. I, Eric Tato, I pledge my soul, my life and everything to this fight. And until we get to Boya, nobody's going to stop me. Remember, remember one thing I've always told you, that of course, nobody's above death. Someday I will die, but I will die in Boya because that is my objective. I will die in Boya and of course, that is where all of us hope to die. At this moment, why I pray for the family of Honorable West Coast, my name as a journalist, as of course, as an Ambazonian as well, I want to urge and make a public appeal for the interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia to make a unilateral declaration on the street where uh, Honorable, uh, 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 where the, uh, uh, the missionary Wesco was killed and to also rename the Bamenda uh, Regional Hospital where Wesco was killed and where his um, mortal, remains, mortal remains were kept for some time to call it the, uh, the Wesco Memorial Hospital. I think that is what 
we should name that hospital the regional hospital in Bamenda, should henceforth, I pray that all Ambazonians who are watching at this time, let them begin no more calling of that name, Bamenda Regional Hospital. A regional hospital will be constructed when we have our country. But for now, let's start calling that hospital the Westco Memorial Hospital or Westco Memorial Foundation because that is where an American great patriot who sold all his property and went to Ambazonia for, evangel for evangelism was killed, brutally killed by the uh, La Republic colonial forces. And so we urge everybody to understand from the street in Bambui where he was killed, we can name that street Honorable Westco, uh, or, or we name it the Westco Street, and we name that hospital the Westco Memorial Foundation in honor of that great man who, who actually lost his life for humanity, saving humanity. And we have also urged the family to use his death, uh, just as the brothers say, the mother and the father said, to use his death as a turning point in our revolution. You are all aware that the Republic of Cameroon is consistent in its attack against our people. But no matter what happens, we'll stay focused, we'll stay committed. And I want to thank all of you for your support. Nelson Ochemba, Kemi Ashu, uh, Edwin Mbeng, all of you who have called me during this time. And some of you were warning that me, Eric Tato, why are you still strong despite all of this? And I've told you that, do not worry. Those who are superficial will not understand what is going on, but it is our obligation as freedom fighters to remain committed to the cause, irrespective of what some people think that they can use it to turn around. So for those of you who are waiting for my apology, I want to say very authoritatively that I owe no Ambazonian any apology. I have done my job and I've done the other job. Just wait and see what will happen ahead in the, in the days ahead. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for everything you've done for your support and keep the fight steady and straight to the course. Goodbye and God bless you. Bye-bye.